Hey everyone, welcome to Nerding IO. I'm JD, and today we're going to be looking at Langsmith and the ability to change custom attributes of the traces. So what that means is we can change things like project name, run name, even things like metadata or tags. But most importantly, we can also actually mask different type of input and output information. This is very similar to a technique we looked at with PII masking. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to look at the Langsmith, Langsmith documentation and understand a little bit about logs and traces or how to log and trace. And so if you've been on this YouTube before, um, we've gone through a few different examples. Previously, we've looked at the way to use Langsmith with Python in JavaScript. And then there's also SDKs for uh, the Python and then TypeScript. We've even looked at the uh, way to post this, so you can actually use Langsmith through a, uh, an API. What we're going to focus, though, on today is mostly JavaScript. We're actually going to look at it in a Next.js application. So you can actually view all of your uh, traces here in Langsmith, and we're going to learn how to customize that information. So if you look down here, there's this how to customize attributes of the traces. And the, the first thing it starts talking about is typically you actually have this export in your environment variables of what your project name is. So uh, this is usually linked directly, like you can see over here in the tab, that it's um, something that Langchain makes up, but you can also define it. So you can specifically define it in your environment variable. Now you can actually create a tracer and actually define it in your project. And then there's other things like adding meta ta metadata tags and even uh, customizing the run name. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at this in Next.js and we'll pull up the previous uh, Next.js repo that we had before. So if we go ahead and look at this, the first thing that you're going to want to notice is you have these variables. Nothing's really changed here. We had a lane chain, uh, lane chain project variable before. If we want to mask our uh, lane chain inputs, we can turn it on here, or we can actually change it in the code. So what I've done is I've created two different routes over here for traces tracers and for the masking route as well as the project route. Project route is kind of like a kitchen sink, so that's where we're going to start. Real quick, everyone, if you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps more than you know. We also have a link below of an upcoming course on privatized GPTs that are white labeled for small business. And with that, let's get back to it. So if we take a, a look at this and then we go match it with our URL here, we're going to pull up this. So this is this comes from the PII app. So we're using that same repo. But if we go ahead and log this, we can see what's going to happen. It's just going to show us the. So if we go ahead and log the, uh, run this, we can actually see what our log will be. And we're just going to look at our code for now. So right now, we can see inside of our code. Right now, we're in tracers, project root. We're just doing a git. We're looking at what our project name is. And then we're going to be putting in our input, which is coming down later here in our variable for our template. We're actually going to take our langchain tracer. We're going to change our project name right in the code. So this way we can make it uh, a variable. So we're going to look in our Langsmith code for my project. Then we're going to go through our prompt in our chain. We have our uh, parser output. And then this is where we start to change our metadata tags. So you can see right here, we have top level tags that we're actually changing. So inside this with config, function, we can actually define the tags and our exclusive metadata for this uh, runnable config. The next thing that's interesting about this is we can actually change it at our runtime as well. So once we're actually invoking the chain, we can actually look and see what our tags are going to be in our metadata. 
And then lastly, we're going to actually do a custom config and see uh, how we can actually have this run name of my custom chain. And again, we're going to have another invoke. So these are two separate invokes. We're actually doing the meta tags and pipeline, uh, the top level tags here, and then shared tags here. And then lastly, we're going to be doing a custom runtime name here. All right, so if we look at our Langsmith now, we can see we have two uh, runs in here. And we're inside our project, and we're going to go ahead and look at our first one, this runnable sequence. So when we click here, we can actually see our metadata is being added both at the top level and the shared level. We can also drill down into not just the runnable sequence, but the template itself. We can see it here. We can see right here we also have our metadata in our when we're making the chat open AI call. And then lastly, we have it in our string, uh, string output parser. So we know that we're associating this metadata on the fly when we're actually calling this particular function. And this makes it easier to find these kinds of logs if we were looking for this particular metadata. The other run that we had in here, remember, we had our first invoke here. This is where we had our top level and our uh, runtime logs or um, metadata and tags. And in here, we actually are configuring the run name to something custom. Again, so this is uh, a different invocation. So if we go back and we look, we can already see right here, here's our my custom chain. And we don't have all of the same uh, metadata. We have our top level metadata, but we don't necessarily have the shared metadata that was on the other invocation. And so that's a really cool way of, again, how we can like customize the attributes so that we can understand where we're actually at in our sequence. Again, making it easier to debug all the different information that's coming into uh, Linksmith. The next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna look at the masking. So if we go back to our code and we go over to this endpoint and we look at our masking route, it's a little bit different. So what we're going to do, and this is left over from before, uh, but where I was trying to put the client in the root and also test out the TypeScript. But what we're going to do is we're going to load in our tracer, and then we have to define a Langsmith client. Now, one of the things that was interesting for me is when I tried to put in the inputs from the documentation, it said that the value needed to be Boolean. So if you come back here, when I was looking at the, the masking input, so you can do it in the environment variables like we talked about, or you can call it here. When I used this, it kept telling me that it needed to be, uh, it, or it expected a Boolean. So I'll just show the error. And so by, uh, by switching this from an any to the uh, a boolean, I was actually able to get it work to work. So it was a little deviation from the um, the documentation. But now what we're going to do is we're actually going to use this Lang uh, chain or the client for Langsmith, and then we're going to have our tracer like we did before. We're passing it the client, and then that client is where we're going to essentially define that we want to hide the inputs and outputs. And it might not, it's not the same as like masking like we did previously with PII where you could kind of hide it and show it and it was storing in, um, in context, but like it's still a way to remove the information from the log. So you can still run your tracer except it won't log the information. So we'll see an example of, of what we mean here. So if we go back to our uh, website, and in this time, we're just gonna be using the masking URI. Go ahead and go refresh, and we'll look at, the, at Langsmith and see what we get. So now we have two different invocations, right? And so the first one, 
We're not expecting any custom meta metadata, but in our run, we don't see any data coming back for the input or the output. And that's specifically because in our code base, we've defined the hide inputs and hide outputs. Right here is where we're actually doing that uh, LLM invoke. So what could be interesting is we could try and see if, well, maybe we just want to hide inputs, but we don't necessarily want to hide outputs. And we'll go ahead and do another run and see what happens. So now when we come here, we can see, again, we're not seeing the input data that's coming out or coming in, but we're seeing the output data. And so that could technically be beneficial for if we only want to, if, if nothing in here is, uh, you know, like PII or anything like that, but the input itself in order to ingest that data could be. And then just to, to show the other uh, LLM invoke, we're just showing that in that same call, we were able to then do a different LLM invoke and we'd still be able to see the input and output. So this allows us to kind of switch back and forth between a uh, filter tracer and an unfiltered tracer. So you can have different versions, but it's still logged into the LangSmith project uh, every single time. All right, everyone, that's it for today. Again, if you haven't liked and subscribed, please remember to do so. We also have that upcoming course. But today what we went over was LangSmith and how to customize the tracers. So being able to focus on a specific project, but also looking at different variables that we can change. And the most important thing, being able to actually mask information that is going in and out of your logs. So with that, happy nerding.